You are now tuned into Talking About the Blues Talk Radio on WFDU HD2. My first name is Jimmy Charles Hong, of course. Some way of Palmer fashion, they replayed the Jimmy Charles Hong with Jimmy Duck Hong, which is my blues alias. Like I, like I say, my birth name was Jimmy Charles Holmes, and through the blues music, while they, they, I'm known as Jimmy Duck Holmes. I lived in Bentonia, Mississippi, been here for 69 years. Now that you know, that's history within itself, because you are the you're running the longest running uh, juke joint in America. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, my parents started in 1948, and I came on board July 1st, 1970. Mm. You, you compile those two days together, and you come up with a long history. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, you, you're coming out of Bentonia, Mississippi, and Bentonia is a specific region and style of the blues. It, it has a unique style of being separate. Now, I didn't know this. I just happened to pick it up of some guys that started doing it back in the early 1900s. And it, 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 it's contributed I mean, to a guy called uh, Henry Stuck who really started it. And it's known worldwide as the Bitonia style of blues. Of course, now we know you got a lot of blues. You got the Delta blues, you got Chicago blues, you got a hill country. But for some reason or another, the, the, the Bitonia style sets out to itself like it's a soul thumb. And I don't ask me any reason why, I don't know. But it is unique to any other blues in the world. Mm. And they say, I mean, the professional who do a lot of research on it says it's the way the guitar is tuned. I don't read music, but I know how to tune it to that particular style. Now, that's deep. And that's, that's also a, a big part of our history and heritage. Because it, most blues musicians didn't know how, well, from the older, because first of all, I just have to let the audience know you're speak, we are listening to, and I'm speaking to, one of the last threads of original blues. Right. Now, like again, the people who studied it, and they, they, I mean, they researched and studied, studied, studied. It, not say it is the only, but they say it, it is an art form. Mm. Not so much as being able to read the music. But they say this particular style of music is a created art form of music itself. And a feel. Right, right. And on this act, this I can tell you, it is played it is played absolutely from the heart as to how you feel on the inside of, of your of your heart, your your emotions. I and mean, it's not the type of blue that you play just what they call it abstract. It's it's played with a emotional feeling. Mm. And that, and I mean, I, I me mean myself, you know, it's not scale because we all know music is based on a scale four, eight, twelve, whatever, twelve bar. The Bitonian style is not scale; it's played absolutely from the way an individual feels. Mm. Now that that's information that most people do not know because most people, especially in today's climate of the blues is really trying to keep to the one four the one five or or 12 bar but bentonia is totally opposite that it's so that's actually the most original or should i say the most closest to the original form of our music once we hit this country correct right. you're right now uh even with the old gospel the old cotton field the gospel saying they, they song out of depression and stuff like that Blue, in part, a little bit of depression, but not mostly blue. The particular style, style of blues I played, and I love this from the guy, it was about relationships. Mm. Sometimes it would, it, would, it would kind of sing or play about a hard day's work, but mo most of this stuff was done by a bad relationship or a good relationship with a woman. Mm. That's the blues. The Victorian style night is pretty much at least 90% of of the big Tony style of blue was played about either a good relationship with a woman or a bad relationship with one or a good experience if you had a cost a week or a bad experience. Were you able to meet uh, Skip James and um, Henry Stuckey? Okay, now, 
Henry Stucker, who was the who was the who was the founder of, of that particular style, he was the first one that introduced me to a good. I was ten years old, but I really learned most of what I know from a guy called Jack Orange, who was pretty much around the same age as Skip Jane. He knew the league this particular community, but Skip left mm. when I was was old enough or big enough. To, you kind of he was already gone. So now let me ask you about your latest album before we go into anything else it is what it is i play it on my radio show all the time okay i'm a first and foremost i'm a big fan and i'm also studying right from you mm-hmm. that is you know i speak to michael all the time about you uh, i've been trying to meet you for some time i, I want to know if you don't mind where you were at when you came up with pencil and paper because that's some hard blues uh, if you, I don't know how old you are, but at one particular time in the black community, especially where, I'm, where I was born and raised, it was no telephone. So no way of communicating other than by pencil and paper. Mm. No way. And it, once you got the address at the way your, 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 your wife or your friend had left and went to, oh, well, you're going to communicate. It's about pencil and paper. Then, believe me or not, hey, a lot of households didn't have pencil and paper. Mm. Now, I'm not talking about uh, what I've heard. It, this I, I lived. Absolutely. This I lived, you know. Didn't have a pencil nor a paper. Wow. So it wasn't like you could go in the study room and get you a, note, a notepad or a sheet of notebook paper or a sheet of loose leaf, loose leaf paper. It wasn't there. Mm. And you would be fortunate or lucky enough if you know what your girlfriend, your wife had ran off to address wise that you could write and communicate with her. That's real. I hope mm-hmm. y'all are paying attention. Now, also, uh, slow down, which is a great, great tune. And I, I hear, I, I like the fact that there's a train at the end of that. Do, do you want to yeah. tell the story of that? Well, slow down, a lot of people don't get the essence of it. They think you're talking about slow down moving-wise or mobility-wise. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. It's your life. You're, you're doing things, I mean, too suddenly. You're out getting drunk or you're out running around a whole lot. You ain't, you're not listening to this sound. Everybody, can't nobody tell you nothing. It, not, it don't mean slow down like vehicle-wise. It means slow down in your lifestyle. You kind of do too much, something's going to happen to you. Mm. When I said traveling too fast, it don't mean you're traveling too fast feet wide. It means you're traveling too fast life wide, running from one extreme to the other. No, see that that's deep and that's real, and that comes yeah. from the heart, you know. Which makes me want to ask you, because again, you you are one of the very few, one of two or maybe three last remaining threads of real traditional blues. So blues. Lyrically, would you say blues is poetry? Uh, not abstract poetry. Blues is poetry based on a living experience that you have that you have experienced, or you know someone that did. Now, I don't, I don't just, just do lyric based on just doing it. Is the lyric I do is I have experienced, or I know someone who did. Mm, so it's life to the and, paper. And, yeah, and the guy that I that I was mentored by. These guys, I mean, they, they told life story with some good time music. They just start singing, and uh, I mean, and I tell a lot of the young guys who who, who want to try to do music. Why I say it's good to be able to do a a style similar to different artists, but no one will never be a BB King. He's dead and gone. Mm. No one will be, never be a Robert Johnson. I don't care how much people say, but he play like Robert Johnson. No, he don't. Mm. I played a bit on his style of music, but not like Henry Stuck and not like Skip Jane. Dig it. No, no, it, it would never happen. Alva King, dead and gone, I don't, I don't care how much people say, he play like Alva King. No, he don't. No, I don't. He might play the same style of tuning. Because those guys, uh, if they did 50 concerts, they never played the good style of same. It might have sounded the same, but trust me, it was never the same. And that's what the blues is. That's what the blues is. Because you wake up every day with a different experience. Mm. Every day. It don't mean it's a bad experience, but every day you wake up, if you're a blues, a blues artist, you can sing something different every day. Because you're living something different. You're feeling something different. Every day. 
every day, every, every day. Mm, I hope y'all and, taking notes. <laughs> and I was up at Fort Town of Washington doing some workshops about three weeks ago. I uh, was doing two classes, 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. And some of my students, was a great musician, great, could read music and everything. And this one t- particular student came in about 10 minutes in, t- into the session. Me and the other guy was playing because they had been there a couple or so days to the workshop. And she, and she raised her hand, so we stopped. She kept saying, timing. I'm thinking she's talking about the timing of their uh, time for the class. And so we started back to playing. And she raised her hand again and said, what about the timing? Then one of the students, when I said, so they were young, but they were 50 or 60 years old. And he, he asked her, what, what, what you mean about timing? When are you going to change? And he told us that this is old school blue. Ain't no such thing as timing. Your heart is the timing. Mm. When your heart tells you to change, that's when you change. Mm. And, and, I, and a lot of times I was still performing. Different ones have heard my music. And like when I was down in Bolivia and South America, I was, La Paz and Santa Cruz. Mm-hmm. They were determined to play with me. And the first time I told them, I said, I don't change on no scale. They knew that. I said, if you want to play, you're perfectly welcome. I said, but if I happen to lose you on stage, don't stumble trying to find me. You back off and go through the motion, keep your ears open. Mm. And when you feel me, you get back in there. I dig it. I dig it. Now, now that's the blue. I hope you all really paying attention because this, this is coming direct from the source, a living legend. You know, let's talk about your Bentonia Blues Festival at the Blue Front, because that's also considered the longest-running blues festival at in, a legitimate juke joint. In, in the state of Mississippi, it's always running an outside blues festival in the state of Mississippi. Mm. And right now, really don't have a lot of, I don't have no corporate sponsors. I'll have people donate $100, $200. And the, <laughs> the reason that I, I try to keep it that way I want to be able to call the shots. Understood. When you start getting corporate sponsors, they, I mean, now they don't want to control it, but they, well, in turn, they got to call a shot because, you know, it's a tax write off. Right. And, and, you know, I I mean, I appreciate every dollar I can get to help me with it, but if it comes to the point where your dollar got to tell me doing what you say, do then that, that won't happen. Right. Right. That, that, <laughs> not, that, 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 that won't happen. No, I, I dig it. I dig it. And you run you run the Blue Front right now, correct? Yeah. As of July 1st, this past July 1st, 46 years. Wow. Open every day, seven days a week. Now, I might not stay there all day, but I bust the key on, lock on that door every day. Mm. Seven days a week. That's the Blues. So now, when did Blues Front Records start? How did this come about? We started a year before last. Well, after Blue Front itself cafe itself started getting so much attention and, and the music I was doing on and people wanted to come by there and, and be identified or maybe do a couple of recordings at the Blue Front. And the guy that helps me, Michael, said he that you couldn't think of nothing no better than to start a label. Not really, it's, it's not a big thing. to start a label and it's called Blue Front Records. And it took off like wildfire. Mm, it sure did. Because, mm. uh, uh, a fellow bluesman out here in New York uh, recorded with you guys recently, right? Tito Della. Right, 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 exactly, exactly. Uh, I want to say back in June, the week coming up to the festival, right? Now, you've been to New York on several occasions. Yeah, I'll be working the East Coast sometime, but I know I'll be up in Boston on the 11th. Uh, I'm going to work my way back through Connecticut and it. My manager, Michael, in the process of trying to get some scheduled on my way back in New York. Now, I, I, I played Long Island University, not just by, not part of my, but from an education standpoint, Long Island University. I did some at the Apollo, and I was scheduled to do some at Paris Blues. I'm scheduled to, either, either next month or month after the B.B. King, whatever it is in Manhattan. But most of my stuff, even though it might be at a club, but the stuff I normally do is it education from an education standpoint and trying to enlighten people that what that what they'll listen to spun off what I do. Mm. Yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. Now, I don't. I don't. I don't. Bra- I don't brag. I don't brag. I, I thank God I was blessed to come up with, come up around some guys who were mentored by some guys who flat could do it. I don't brag. 
I dig it, and you should be celebrated right now. I don't brag and I don't boast. I thank God I was blessed enough to got something to offer to the world that originated out of America and that belongs to America. Right, given to America by our people. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the State Department was the one that sent me down to South America, down, down to Bolivia, to the two places, Santa Cruz and Nepal. The State Department did that. The ambassador to uh, uh, Bolivia. Mm. One that, the one that made that work. So how was that experience? How did they receive that piece of American history that you were presenting? Oh, man, they, they, they knew more about me than I knew about myself. Most of them <laughs> couldn't, speak, couldn't, speak, couldn't speak no English, but they, 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 they knew that music. Wow. Matter of fact, Michael in the process, because they, they recorded some of the sessions that I did, mm -hmm. and it's going to be released on the Blue Fun record. Nice, nice. Now, your album is out being sold from Blue Front Record, how can people get to the album? Well, now, I'm technically illiterate. All I can do is answer the phone and make a call. But now, Michael told me whatever they want to do with that, with anything related to Jimmy Duck Holmes or the Blue Front Cafe, he said all they have to do is go on in, go in the internet and type in Jimmy Duck Holmes or Blue Front Cafe, whatever they're looking for, it's going it's, to it's, it's, it's connection now. Okay. Okay, so look them up on the internet. Go to the website, because there is a website. Well, it says it's a Blue Front Cafe website, Victoria, Mississippi, and it's Jimmy Duck Home Blue Front website, and it's all the links are there. Okay, groovy, groovy. Now, you've been playing with a specific guitar for a while. Uh, the Epiphone? You're right. Talk, talk to us about, about your connection with this guitar. It's, it's, it's sort of a mystery. I don't know where I was. I tried to pinpoint out back to St. Louis. I was somewhere else playing, and I had a whole, it was an acoustic guitar, but it was more or less had a country and western guitar appearance. And on Dolly, it, it was an Amazon representative there, or whoever. On Dolly, the type of music I was playing, then, then, then I uh, then kind of go inside with a particular guitar. And lo and behold, one day I looked up, a FedEx truck pulled up, pulled up and say, well, look at Jimmy Duck home. I knew I had an organ thing. Out come the guitar, and I kind of started coursing. And they said they, they, I needed a guitar that looked at blues authentic and sound blues authentic. And lo and behold, it looked just the occasion and sounds the occasion. Mm. Now, who was responsible for getting me that guitar? I do not know. <laughs> I do not know. But I know it was good. It was built by Epiphone. They said it was hand built to make it look authentic. Oh, I mean, back day why it didn't sound like that. And like I was saying, and I get coursing every time I get on stage, and the first note I run when I get off stage, they say, Where that guitar come from? I wow. say, Epiphone. <laughs> that's how you well, that's it. all I know, man. That's all I know. Now, I know it sounds different. Mm. It, 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 the sound takes you back. 40 or 50 years. But now, how did Epiphone come up with that? I do not know. But they did. <laughs> they did it. I want to connect something here. You said earlier, it's not about scales, it's about the feel. It's not about time, it's about the feel. And you just said, when you got that Epiphone, you you pretty much felt that that, that it was right, it was connected. So exactly. now, describe that feeling when you know it's right. I can tell any. It don't exactly have to be blue. If you're not doing it from inside, you, uh, oh, you got to split it, and your feeling inside got to transform through your hand, your fingers, to make the good tire answer you. Because the good tire will, will only answer you as according to what you ask it. Mm. You got to come from the heart by will your arms and fingers to tell the good tire. This is what I want to describe all my people to understand. You got to feel it in your heart. And your good time, your voice makes the people feel it. Mm. You might not know it. Now. I kind of, kind of compare. Years ago, they used to have what you call Hallelujah preachers. Absolutely, I'm very. Oh, familiar. now he was hooping hard, scripty wise now. Yeah. Until he got his listening congregation to feel what he was preaching, and they started to fall down the people. But the ones that wasn't getting what he was preaching about from his heart, they were set there. But the one who, who, who was truly listening to what he was saying from it, they would start to shout, hooping and hollering, running up and down the audience. Mm -hmm. And because many preachers don't do that now. A hallelujah preacher wants, wants his, his congregation to feel what he felt. 
And that's the way it is with a blues musician. He wants his listener, listener to feel what he feels, and they won't worry about him changing. Mm. They just into what's being felt, what they're feeling, they're connecting. Exactly, exactly, exactly. My baby's gone. I'll soon be gone myself. My baby's gone, and if I can't have her, I don't want nobody else. Now, somebody I think can identify with that. Absolutely. <laughs> my baby's gone. I'll soon be gone myself. If I can't have my baby back, I don't want nobody else. Now, somebody that would be listening to me saying that can identify with that. That's right. That's right. Because it's real. It's a real emotion. That's what I'm saying. And I'm happy you brought this up. The church, right? Mm -hmm. Holland pastors and blues musicians. There's a lot of similarities. So would you say there's a difference between uh, uh, the gospel, the spirituals, and the blues? Well, biblically, why shift around, those two hallelujah preachers wanted their congregation to feel feel what Christ wants them to do. He wants them to feel it from their heart. I mean, he, he feel like his son, his son wouldn't, have, wouldn't affect it if he couldn't get that point across. Then maybe they didn't really understand what he was saying, but once, once they started shouting and whatever, he felt like he had made his point. They understand what Christ wanted them to know. Now, in, in the blues setting, music-wise, lyric-wise, if your listener can sit there not worrying about you making change every four count, eight count, twelve count. If they can sit there and listen to you, understand what you're trying to convey to them verbally and music wise, then are uh, you know, completed success of what you're trying to come, I mean, convey to your listening audience. Mm. Now, true blue, old country blue, wasn't designed to make you dance. It wasn't designed to entertain you. Now you might be entertained. But that was not those guys' intent. They didn't, they didn't want to entertain you. They weren't trying to make you dance. They was telling you a story with some music. And if you so happen to be entertained by what they were telling you, or if you so happen to want to get up and dance, that was fine, but that was not their intention. Mm. See, the dance and the rhythm came along with the bass and the drums. The guys I learned from them have been that. You got your beat from your drums and your bass. All those guys had with us a regular, some people call the lead, that's a regular guitar. Now, if you could mentally pick up a beat that you wanted to dance, that was fine. Or if you wanted to be entertained by what they were doing, that was fine. But that was not their intention, not the entertainment. They wanted to kill you a soul. And going, going back uh, to the gospel or whatever, the feel holler, the feel holler. Those people wouldn't holler and sing to the good Lord. They only wanted mercy from God, and they wanted God to hear their plea mm. and push the heart of the master. Mm. They wouldn't sing to the master. Uh, they wouldn't feel hollering to the master for faith. They would feel hollering to God. Oh, Jesus wants to stop by here. And they knew Jesus wasn't going to physically stop by, but they wanted Jesus to push the heart of their master. They kind of relieved that burden he had to them. And the bottom line, the blue, the blue people doing my, from the folks I learned from, they wanted you to understand what they was going through, that maybe you could sympathize or maybe you had went through the same thing. I just have to say that was the best description of what this is about that I, I've ever heard. And I'm really honored that this was on my show because um, so many people don't really understand or know what the blues really, really is. You just told them what the blues is and where it came from. And I mean, I'm I'm no professional. I don't read not the first news if a if a C note or G note hit me dead in the face, I wouldn't know. And I, I kind of equate the blues with a a scientist or a physicist. They couldn't lie about that. Mm. A physicist couldn't lie about it. the world goes around. Uh, Albert Einstein couldn't lie. Everything, everything he come up with had to be true. That's the same thing with the blues. Because if it's not true, it ain't gonna be felt. Thank you. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Wow. So let me, if you could remember, if you could remember, because you said you you started learning at nine. Do you remember the first blues, uh, Bentonia blues song you heard? Yeah, but uh, it was a couple of them. I can't say which one came first. It was one in particular, 
and I don't know who actually really is, but the first one did, and they still pop a recognized one called Hard Time Killing Flow, and some people call it Hard Time Breathing Flow. Then I said, no one, because uh, the devil blues, you know, so I'm called Devil Got My Mama, or oh, it had to be the devil, but that, that, was, that was the first two songs that I heard directly related to the Big Tony style of blues. Let's go back to the juke joint because the juke joint plays a big role in the blues. Uh -huh. And a lot of people love to talk about juke joints because historically, it you know, it's very important. But I don't think most people really know what was happening in these places. Could you share well, some it, stories? It, was a, and it, it, it has been a misconcept even with the professional. They'll say juke joint, juke house, but it was, it was 100 percent different. A juke joint was licensed because a lot of illegal stuff went on. But a juke joint was licensed. A juke joint was someone's dwelling place where they had set aside one particular area of that particular house to have parties. A juke joint was licensed, but like I say, a lot of illegal activity was activity going like gambling, selling moonshine. A juke house. It was actually someone's dwelling place where they set aside one room or the backyard to have outside out 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 parties and stuff like that. And, and most juke houses were on someone's plantation. And the law officials couldn't call them unless they went by the plantation owner. Mm. But now, like I said, the, the juke joints were licensed by the state. They had bill license, not no liquor license, they had bill license. So they could, they, oh, well, they could retail stuff. But a juke house, for someone decides they want to have five or ten people over here, five or seven, something that sells some moonshine or what have you, illegally. Because now the fishes wasn't going to bother because they had to go through that plantation owner. And like I said, it was a dwelling place. And like the blue front end of it was a juke joint right in the state. We didn't live there. We had a little old house about two or three miles up the road. And like I say, at the blue front, we had some of the grace came through Playing for the a nickel in the hat. Mm. People like Muddy Waters howling. It was not on a schedule basis now, not on a schedule basis. They would drop by on Saturday afternoon. Most of, most of them worked until dark on Friday. They would jump by, drop by either late Friday night or Saturday afternoon. Cause in the rural area, farming wise, you were going to work until Saturday to noon. And from, from Saturday to noon to Monday morning, you were pretty much free to roam. And what we're having those guys, uh, like, like again, like I said, Muddy Waters, Howling Wolf, uh, Fun But We, not just the Blue Front now, they would hit a lot of juke darts and play for tips. Mm. And I, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but I don't know them. No juke houses that had that particular activity. Because most of your juke houses didn't really start driving until the illegal juke darts closed up. It's around 10, 10 30 on weekends. And people leave, leave the juke joints with the license because they were was, was patrolled by policemen. Juke houses wasn't. So once the juke joints closed, then a lot of the patients went on to the juke houses because they could go all night long. So your parents were sharecroppers? Yep, yep, yep. Even, even, though, even though my dad and my acquired a little small piece of land, and we call it sharecroppers because they would always borrow money from the big wealth of white farmers to produce their crop and in turn they would have when they said share cropping, they had to share part of what they produced. They, a third or fourth or half. They call that share cropping. Wow. You probably didn't pay you didn't pay anybody really in cash. You had to when it, you had to share part of your producing. And it was more or less done on a third if it was if you was talking about cotton, if you get a three bales of cotton one little bell went to the man who financed your particular year of farm. They call that shell crop. You are getting history right now, guys. You A lot of people don't really understand what that what that means today. No. It, it just it was whatever if if you had a wealthy uh, man that was able to finance your farming, you he wouldn't expect you to pay him back in cash. Because it, it, in turn it's gonna be eventually turn to cash. Like I said, if if you if you raise Say three bushels of corn. You owe them one bushel. Mm. And he was going to talk about a sale and turn into cash, but that's what they call a share crop. You owe him a share of whatever you produce. 
That's that's deep. That's history. That's banking. That's the banking system. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, did you work on the farm as a young man? No, most of my farm was did to my 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 parents. So we raised a little everything. We laid raised a livestock. We fed us and a lot of your vegetables are always fed and stuff like that. But didn't really have time to do working what they call day labor for any of the farmers because, like I said, we produced most of our own food. Oh wow! Mm. Wow. Do you to this day do you still grow food or no? Not to that extent because, like I say, everybody now they ain't got time to sit up and shell them butter beans or peas and put them in a pot and let them cook for three or four hours. People now they want to go to the market and get it. All you got to do is stick it in the microwave and it's ready. Right. Nah. Do you think the quality of food, I believe so, but do you think the quality of food was better when people took that time uh, compared to now? Yeah, because it wasn't no attitude. If you get it, if you get it out of the market, it got something in it. I, I don't care if it's produce, it got to spread so it don't wither in the, in, in the cooler. Mm. If you're not going out in the garden, getting it off the vine or the stalk itself, then it got some chemical additive to it. Is it healthy? I don't know. Mm, but it got something. You got something in it. You just dropped the album. You got a couple of, um, you have a couple of, you got a tour and some shows coming up in different uh, regions of the uh, of the states. Well, I got the I got the Delta Blues that's on the seventeenth. Uh, I'll be in Boston, Massachusetts uh, on the eleventh. I'll be in New Orleans on the fifteenth. Oh, I got a, I and who else, who knows what might jump off. But those are stuff we got on schedule. And yeah. like I said, <laughs> it's educational. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I do something in a club, it's not for the sake of making people part out. do something in a club but the way I'm going to do a workshop to explain people as to what I do and why I do it. And what it's about. Exactly. Now, I do stuff in club, but it's not, it's not say, from a club atmosphere where you're coming in and get drunk and dance and cut up like a knock. Hmm. And when they when they schedule something in the club, they tr they try their best to show the relationship between what I do and the actual club party. Mm. So in, in, let me let me ask you this: Are you showing people that the blues isn't just relationship to liquor and bad behavior? Exactly, exactly. And I tell a lot of the young musicians. Especially when I visit the university in the music department, the guys that are inspiring that want to do hip hop or R&B or jazz, and they say, "Well, I don't play blues." I said, well, "You don't play no guitar <laughs> because you can't you can't play nothing on a guitar unless you go on some blue licks. You might not be aware of it." That's right. When they say, "When they say I don't play blues," well, you don't play no guitar. You don't play no piano. Any string, any string instrument, you can't play it. Unless you blunt run blues, no, not you don't even know it. You're not even aware of it. Mm. Blues is the basic. You can't do no gospel without it running blues because you can't do no blues on string instruments without doing gospel music wise. That's right. That's right. I mean, I I'd, I'd be I'd be honest about it. You you can't play gospel on a piano or a guitar unless you do blues lick. You can't play blues unless you do gospel lick. I agree. It's one and the same. That's exactly. I don't like talking about this too much anymore, but I have to bring this to the forefront because it's very important for young people and adults to understand the history of this music. It's American music. It was born on American soil, but... Absolutely. It's, it's black folk music. Exactly. I, don't, I mean, I don't like to use that term, but it is. Okay. It, it, it's black folk music by way of America. America can, can claim ownership of it because it originated out of America by way of the black society, mm. of the black community. That you mean you can't change. Black folk did it in America, so you can't change. You can't separate it. Right, right. You, 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 you can't separate it. And that's the truth. That's just the truth. That's the, that's the plain truth. So I, I would take it you agree this should be a, a history course in school. Well, unless our black professional get out of that thing, I don't be identified. Don't want to be identified with blue. You, you, you can't. You, you can't do that. Mm. 
because blue is a part of the black culture. So from, from even me to say that, no, I don't know, I don't, you can't get around it because it's part of the black culture. We did it. We did it. And I don't make no big issue out of that. And my thing is people do it because they don't want to stand. Okay. I had a, I had an experience a few years ago at the Clarksdale Delta uh, Sunflower Rule Blue Fest. They had this big stage set aside for Robert Plant, who played with Led Zeppelin or somebody. Mm -hmm. And some of the old time was black guys. Some of the old time with the foundation of it wasn't allowed to get on that stage. Wow. And I pissed a bitch. I said, I had me with these. No, I told him on the microphone, I had me with these guys. It wouldn't be no damn felt. Just like, excuse my language now. I said, but now, these guys cannot get on the stage. And they are old enough for, for Robert Plant's dad. But all of a sudden, here you got a stage at a blue stuff. These guys started it all, but they can't get on the stage. That's crazy. And I ain't been booked back. I hadn't been booked back at that stuff for sense. But God knows, do I care? No. Understood. When I drove up, they got these guys, uh, L.C. Um, uh, it was three of the guys, 70, 80 years old, who weathered the storm years ago for, for the uh, for the New Day uh, blues musicians. But now they got this big, big fast stage. These guys couldn't get on it. And that's a smack in the face. To me, but believe me, uh, believe me, if I didn't, I, I, they wouldn't let me get on the stage, but I stood down on the ground, I wrecked them. Hmm. And they, they said Robert Plant said he didn't know. He was mad about that, but they hadn't booked me back since. <laughs> it, was, it was embarrassing. To them. You had, you had Eddie Cousy, you had Robert Bell, these old guys, early 80s, late 70s, couldn't get on the stage. And, when, and without those guys, there wouldn't be no certain thing as a blues festival. Well, see, you know, and, and that's. That's why, even though I don't always like to bring it up, it, this has to be discussed because they, they, there's no possible. How can you have a blues festival without real blues musicians? That they do, they do it all the time. And everywhere I go, but I, I address that. You, you want to label it as a blues festival, but then it's everything but that. Mm. The name blues festival gets the crowd, but then you got. I'm not saying that they have Chicago blues. Or, uh, he'll, but they don't have the original blue. Right, and the foundation. That, uh, the foundation. Exactly. But anyway, it's just one man opinion of mine. No, oh, I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. I dig. How, how do you feel about the climate of the the music, not just the festivals, but the, the, the music? Because there's a lot of music that's labeled blues, but it's actually not. Uh, the, the people who really, really know it, Oh, uh, they appreciate two hundred percent what I'm what I do because I'm telling my best to preserve it. If it don't get it preserved, and it ain't because Jimmy Duck Home didn't try. Mm. I mean, and when I do, when I go do concert, not well, when I go do workshop or festival or concert, and especially what, if it wasn't if they don't cover chart, I, first thing I tell them, if you come to hear anything other than country blue. You're at the wrong stage. I dig it. That's all I got to offer you. I just <laughs> my thing. If you come and hear anything but old country blue, I'm going to give you five or ten minutes to find another place to go because all, all I'm going to give you. And I said, if you come for me to make your dance, I ain't going to do that. I know what I can do. I can play this guitar and tell you a story. And they always go, wow. <laughs> but I mean, I'm, I, it, it sounds like a joke, but I'm being honest. If, if you come to one of my concerts, if you come there for me to make you dance or uh, you want whatever, I can't do that. Mm. Well, I take that back. It's not my intention. I dig it. I dig mm -hmm. it. I really dig it. I, it's been a true honor to be able to sit down and discuss the talk the blues with you. And that's my, the last CD I released, and I want you to think about this. I don't care what you have done today, yesterday. Last year for last, it is what it is. <laughs> That's right. Y'all make sure y'all get out and get that CD. It is what it is. It's on Spotify. Uh, I believe it's on it, iTunes too, right? Exactly. And uh, and my thing, where I come up with that, I don't care what the circumstances is, whether it's positive or negative. It is what it is. You can't change it. Mm. So like the. Oh, perfect example. So like the song Slow Down, 
it's pretty much saying it is what it is. You got to deal with it and try your best to deal with it in the best way you can. Okay. Now, what I equate that with, say if you got a, a child, girl or boy, and you can't talk to them, you can't tell them nothing. Everything you tell them, they don't want to listen. And like I was saying earlier, it's not me they are traveling too fast, feet wide. It's just they're doing too many things and running from one extreme to the other. And, and I used to tell my son, son, slow down and come to yourself. That's why I come up with that title from slow down, slow down. Mm. You're traveling to too fast. Slow down, slow down, or you ain't going to last. It don't mean you're running on your, on your feet. It don't mean that. It just means you, you're doing, trying to do too many things in life at one time. But anyway, I could, I could preach it all afternoon. Now, <laughs> you, you should ask my manager, if you call me on the interview, I don't lie. No. I don't lie. Well, because the blues don't lie, so you can't. <laughs> I don't lie now. I, I, the old folks say I shoot straight from the hip. That's right. That's right. That's right. And matter of fact, that's that's an old school term. My granddaddy and grandmama used to say that because um, they're from Gloucester, Mississippi, and they used to always say, you better come back to yourself, boy. You better come to yourself. And my daddy used to tell me all the time, you look a person direct in the eye and tell them the truth. He might not remember your name, but he's going to remember you. Mm. So look him direct in the face. Look him direct in the face and speak the truth. Mm. They might not never remember your name, but they will, will not forget your face or will not forget what you told them. And they'll respect it. They respect it. They might not like it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but anyway, I hope I've been of some help to you. Oh, man, you've been great. A uh, help to me, a help to the talking about the blues community because this is what this platform is about and we really appreciate your time and by the way we are talking and you're at the blue front cafe right now correct exactly so you see that you hear this guys right so we, we we're actually having this interview and he's and a legendary bluesman is standing in his legendary and historical establishment. Pay attention, because you're getting some, you're going to learn them blues, because we're going to mm -hmm. teach it. Thank you, sir, very much for your time. Okay, no problem.